All right, so a while back, I made a video where I broke down the extended soprano family tree and explained how everyone was related to each other. People really liked that video, and many people asked me to do the same thing for the soprano crime family, essentially explain how the organization works. I held off on doing this for a long time because I knew it was going to be a mess. The Sopranos is not a show that concerns itself with getting every single minute detail of mob life correct. It's a family drama that just happens to be set in the world of the mob, but the characters and themes are much more important to the writers than making sure the mafia aspect is 100% correct. Tony, uh, let me ask you a question. And now if I'm stepping on toes, tell me. How real was The Godfather? As such, it can be hard to parse out how exactly the organization works. There are dozens of side characters in this show, many of whom never speak or are just in the background of scenes, and trying to figure out where exactly they fit into the organization is basically impossible. It's not always clear who's actually a made guy and who's just an associate, and on top of that, some characters are just introduced randomly, and the show is like, oh yeah, he's a captain now or something. I did my best, but I'm going to say right up front that I probably made many mistakes when organizing the family. If I missed any characters or details, feel free to point them out to me in the comments. I also want to give a shout out to the Sopranos wiki, which was absolutely essential for finding information about all these little side mobsters. I figure the easiest way to do this is to just go season by season and break down each of the crews. The crews change over time as well, and I'll let you know when that happens. Let's start with season 1. In the first season, the acting boss of the family is Jackie Aprile. He's the acting boss while the real boss of the family, Eric Lee DeMeo, serves a life sentence in prison. DeMeo is mentioned a few times in the series, but given his age and the sentence, he's not very relevant to the story. There are six active crews at the beginning of the series, each led by a capo. Tony Soprano, Larry Baris, Jimmy Altieri, Ray Curdo, Junior Soprano, and Jackie's own crew. We aren't introduced to any of Jackie's men this season, though we are told that the rat, Febby Petrullio, used to work for Jackie. Febby and me partied a couple times, but Jackie and Prilly knew him real good. They did a couple of counts together up in Lewisburg. Tony's crew consists of the main characters of the show, Silvio Dante, Big Pussy Bompensero, Polly Walnuts, and Tony's nephew, Christopher. Christopher's friend Brendan is also sort of a hanger-on to the crew. Also, Hesh Rabkin serves as an associate and mentor to Tony. Junior's crew consists of Mikey Palmis, one of his key enforcers and later consigliere. Another is Chucky Signore, another one of his enforcers, and Joseph Bepisasso, his underboss who's arrested at the same time he is. Funny enough, he has another associate named Beppi Servo, who's actually played by David Chase's cousin. There's also Donnie Paduana, the guy who organizes the black guys who try to hit Tony. Junior has him whacked for laughing about Livia. Finally, we also know that Junior was associated with Little Pussy Malanga before they had a falling out, and Junior planned to have him killed. However, even after his apparent death, Junior continued to be haunted by the memories of his old rival. Malanga, will you stop with that? Pussy Malanga's dead. Six years now. I should dig him up already. The three other captains are an interesting situation. Despite being leaders of the family, their crews are never really shown, and especially after the first season, their role in the show is greatly diminished. Larry Barisa's crew is referred to as being the biggest in the family, though we aren't shown any of its members, the only exceptions being Larry's brother Albert and his associate Rusty Irish, the guy Mikey threw off the falls. That chunky fuck was my biggest earner. During the football season, he moved more cards than 10 guys put together. The same thing is true of Jimmy Altieri's crew. The only known associate is Sammy Grigio, the guy running the card game for Jimmy. I'm with little Jimmy Altieri. Yeah? You paying Jimmy for this game? Huh, Sammy? Ray Curdo is the same. The only known member of his crew is Kevin Sharkey, a background character in Pax Soprana, He's portrayed by Anthony Carozzo, an allegedly connected guy to the Gambino family. At the start of season 2, Tony is effectively taken over as boss of the family, though Junior continues to hold the title in name. As such, he moves up, as does Silvio, his consigliere. Polly is made the captain of Tony's former crew, meaning that people now report to him directly. 
It's me and you and Sil together. That's the new pecking order. There are several new additions to the crew, the most important being Furio Junta, a made guy from the Zucca family in Italy who's sent to work for Tony. He's also accompanied by fellow Italian Gaetano Giorizzo. Season 2 also introduces Jack Mazzarone, the owner of a construction company that the Sopranos have a lot of dealings with. I don't know if he counts as an associate or not, but I'm including him here. In addition, Christopher also has two new associates of his own, Matthew Bevilacqua and Sean Gismonte. Both would be killed when they attempt to murder Christopher. Christopher also has another associate named Tommy Macarado, the guy who's going to steal the Pokemon cards with. Pokemon cards. Me and Tommy Mac are taking down a truckload. This season also sees the return of Richie April, the older brother of Jackie. He takes over Jackie's crew, which consists of his nephews, Vito and Brian Spatafore, Eugene Pontecorvo, and Donnie Kay. Robert Zanzone, who runs the garbage business, is an associate of Richie's. Also, Beansy Gaeta used to work for Richie before he went away, though he has since become independent. I moved a lot of H for you and your brother, and you guys made the lion's share. Finally, this season we have some new additions to Junior's crew. The most prominent is Bobby Baccalieri II, who will be Junior's right-hand man throughout the rest of the series. His father, Robert Sr., was also said to have worked for Junior before he retired. Finally, Gigi Sestone and the twins Philly and Patsy Parisi also used to be Junior's men before Tony brought them over to his crew. Well, we brought him over from Junior's crew to keep an eye on him. Season 3 only sees a few additions to the Galtieri crew. Christopher becomes a made guy, and we introduce Benny Fazio. We also have Warren Dupree, an associate of Polly's who runs the gambling operation. The biggest change comes to the Aprio crew. With Richie dead, the leadership changes first to Gigi, and after his death, Ralphie Cifaretto, who has returned from Miami. We also get several April associates, such as Joey Flies, Gigi's Goombada who tells him about Patsy's drinking problem, Joe the man who runs the casino, and Sunshine, the car dealer who works for Ralphie. And on top of that, Dogsy, who accompanies Vito to intimidate the appraiser, and later accompanies Eugene to intimidate the juror in Junior's trial. Also, and I know this doesn't really count, but Jackie Jr. has his own little crew at this time, consisting of Dino Zarelli, Carlo Renzi, and Matouche. They work for Ralph for a little bit before hitting the card game and getting themselves killed. Season 4 only has a few changes. Christopher takes over as acting captain of their crew when Polly is in prison. We only have two new additions, Peter La Rosa, who along with Benny kills the black guys who were hired to take out Carmine Sr., and Alfie Gaduti, one of the guys sent to vandalize Carmine's restaurant. Junior's crew also sees the addition of one new member, Murph Lupo, an old man who's constantly being more of a nuisance than a help. We're also later introduced to Tommy, the guy who lets Junior escape the house in Where's Johnny. That's not until next season, but it's such a small role, I figured I would just throw it in here. Finally, we have a new captain, Carlo Gervasi, who takes over Jimmy Altieri's old crew. His associates include Terry Doria and Vincent Pizzaturo, who work on the docks that is one of the main sources of income for Carlo. It's a big part of my livelihood, that point. Season 5 sees the addition of Dante Greco to the Galtieri crew, and he would actually become a pretty prominent background character in many scenes going forward. Another addition is Jason Molinaro, who you might remember as the guy who messed up Joey Peep's gravestone. Fucking Jason. He's dyslexic. What's that got to do with it? The only other notable additions are Frankie Cortese and Corky DiGioa, two bouncers at the Bing who grab Christopher when he's drunk. Frankie is played by Tony Siragusa, a former professional football player. And, of course, there's Tony Blundetto, the cousin of Tony Soprano. Though he initially wants to go straight, he later changes his mind and decides to go back to crime. However, he's notably not made since he was in prison all these years, so he's technically just an associate. I'll see what I can do about getting you straightened out. Opening up the books for you. It's long overdue. And of course, I'm just realizing this now as I'm recording this, but there's also Feech Lamana, who I just did a video about. Go check that out if you want more information about Feech. 
Finally, we get to Season 6. There are several important additions to the Galtieri crew. First is Perry Annunziata, Tony's driver who he later beats up to prove his dominance. There's also Walden Belfiore, who despite his brief appearance, manages to make an impression. Walden, what the fuck kind of name is that for an Italian? I was named after Mr. Bobby Darren, Walden Robert Casoto. There's also Bert Gervasi, a cousin of Carlo. He's introduced as a newly made man to the family and is later killed by Silvio for betraying Tony and siding with New York. Finally, we have Carrie Di Bartolo, who accompanies Pauly when he robs the Colombians in Mayhem. Season 6 also introduces Christopher moving up to being a captain in his own right. So this comes from Tony? It's coming from me. I'm not a fucking captain. All right, okay. Underneath him seems to be Benny and little Pauly, though I don't think we're ever given a direct confirmation of this. He also has Murmur Zancone, whom he met while he was in recovery. So you have to be here, you fucking AA sponsor? It ain't just that he helps me with the disease, hey, this guy's great at forging documents. There's also Corky Caporale, a drug addict who acts as the middleman in multiple hits they plan. I guess we could also include JT Dolan as an associate of his, though again, I don't really know if he would actually count or not. Finally, it can be presumed that Bobby takes over as captain over Junior's crew. However, there is some confusion about this. After Junior shoots Tony and is incarcerated, Polly says that Junior's turf now belongs to Bobby. Roseville's been Junior's territory since the Big Bang, which means it goes to Bobby now that Junior's out of the pitch. However, Janice later complains to Tony that Bobby should be a captain, implying that he isn't at this point in the story. You punish Bobby because he's my husband. Will you stop, huh? To be his age and not to be a captain. I don't know who was running Junior's territory during this time period, but regardless, Bobby is eventually promoted to underboss of the family once Tony no longer has faith in Christopher. Plus Silvio Dante and we think Bobby Bacchieri. That Mortadelle's number three? He used to be Junior Soprano's driver. Again, it's likely that he took over Junior's operation and his men, and we see that John Stefano, who runs their asbestos scheme, pays up to him. Anthony Maffei, another associate, is with Bobby, implying that he also now works for him as well. Anyway, that's the family, or at least as close to a complete picture as I'm able to put together. I know there are other people like Uncle Pat Blundetto, or even people like the pastor that I could have tried to fit into this list. But again, I'm not exactly sure where the line is between family associates and just people that Tony knows. And I'm not sure the show knows entirely either. But either way, I hope this breakdown has been useful in helping you understand the Soprano crime family. If you noticed anyone I misplaced or left off the list, let me know in the comments. And stay tuned for more Sopranos videos coming soon. This thing is a Patreon, since time immemorial. Content runs downhill, money runs up. Obs Gracing Media, Daz J Kid, Sam Cedarland, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, Brad Smith Studios, Uncle Mike, Matt Joyce, Countess Von Zarevich, and Luke P.